we're here today because we feel that the movement is still searching for a vision that will take us from capitalism, which we see as the cause of all the ills that have brought us here today. All single issues are now being united and, as someone's saying, connecting, connecting the dots to see that it's actually an economic system that's causing our problems. We can enumerate them, but we'd be here from now until next week. What we need to do is take an understanding that the system is causing the problems and it's a system that we have to replace. And the question then becomes replaced with what? We feel that if a movement has a vision and a goal and an understanding of what needs to be uh, moved towards, that the strategy will organically develop. The strategy, as we see it, probably will be a lot of independent move, uh, a lot of independent candidates running for office for Congress. After the elections, we can then start to make institutional changes peacefully through the thing that our forefathers and foremothers put into our Constitution, Article 5, which they, with great insight, included in the Constitution so that we as people would be able to change our society when the time came, and the time is now. We'll be discussing vision, we'll be discussing goal, strategies, and tactics. And we'll also have questions and answers, hopefully, uh, to follow, but we just want to be able to give you at least a, uh, a brief introduction to what our idea about what a new society would look like, how it would work. The idea that utopianism and, you know, being dreamers, uh, that idea may have made some sort of sense before we are entering the 21st century, but with the uh, kind of technology and communication uh, and internet access that we have, the interactive internet, that we feel democracy is not only possible, it's absolutely necessary. So we're going to talk about what that new society would look like and again how it would work and then we'll take your questions. Thanks, Lilia. <coughs> we're at a moment in history where people are starting to see that it's really our economic system that is that the root cause of the misery and suffering and inadequate everything that's in the world today. That's apparent to everyone who's living, whether they're out of work, they're unemployed, they can't get health care, they, they're homeless, they can't get housing, they, can't, ha, they don't have access to good education, the air and water are filed. We're living in a time when people are really desperate for a change. What kind of change? That's the question. People don't want to just change for the sake of change, but if they don't know what's possible, what kind of a society can we make? That's understandable. That's human nature. No one wants to jump off the edge of a cliff without having an idea what's down there. And, and that inhibits people from making change. Our idea is if a outline, and this isn't etched in stone forever, but it's a, some sort of a goal and an illustration of, a green print. and a what? A green, a green print, as sometimes we say. If we have an idea of how we can structure our governance system in a post-capitalist society, how we can have a real grassroots democracy where all of the decision making is in our hands. What we make, how we produce it, what kind of things, what kind of communities we want to live in, what kind of products do we want to have made for ourselves, that we make ourselves. And uh, th that is a an idea that people want, I think, but no one's really kind of articulated it at this point. And that's what we're about. I represent a group called People for a New Society. Sometimes it's known as PFANS. PFANS. People for a New Society. We have a website you can go to. 
And this is a, these charts up here are just a basic graphic illustration of how we may organize ourselves as workers, the 99 percenters, into managing our own economy, running our own economy, and trying to create the kind of world we want, us. We are the working class, and no matter what station in the wage system you may occupy right now, you might consider yourself middle class, or upper middle class, or lower middle class, or the working poor, whatever. If you have to sell your labor power to any owner, and you don't own the means of production, and you receive a wage, salary, or commission, you are a worker. The highest paid baseball player, he's still a worker because he's producing more wealth for his team owner than he receives in salary, even though he might be making $5 million. So this idea is we, the workers, we, the working class, can manage our own affairs. We don't need a hierarchy. We don't need senators and uh, presidents and so on to, to, and corporate leaders, any kind of hierarchical structure. We don't need to have that to manage our own affairs. We get up every morning, every day, and we go out and we make this city run. We make this country run. We run the factories. We, right now, today, we don't own them. We don't have any say so in what we're making or any or any kind of how we're going to structure that process. We just go do our work, get our wage, which is only a portion of the value of the product we've actually produced. The rest is, goes to profit after expenses for the for the owner, and we we're, we're left out. We may get enough in a wage to buy back uh, a portion of our product, but it's never enough. We're falling behind, always falling behind. The wages in this country have fallen behind since the 1970s. They fell so far behind that people couldn't buy anything anymore. So credit cards were introduced by the banks. They knew the wages were down, so let's put it on hock. Let's put those workers in hock, and we have. Now we're in debt, personally. So we're losing all out at all times, economically.